I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 with my father and brother and I. We're at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. I'm Arthur Boyle of Performance Appraisal Services. We're residential real estate appraisers with a company founded in 1994 by Mike Gianelli and I in the basement of my house in Malden. We've since grown to have offices in Malden and Pembroke. We serve the Eastern Mass counties, including Cape Cod. A good client for us is an attorney or a private landowner or a private property owner who's going through a probate process or a divorce division of property. Call us at 781-293-6900. Ask for Arthur Boyle or Amanda Boyle Grazioso. Our first name is Performance. Being uh, 715, we have an informal discussion. Lenham's Ford Product, uh, Town of Pembroke, Ed Dorn, Town Administrator, Robert Clark, Conservation Agent, Eagle Scout Bridge. Get another chair. Good evening. Good evening, folks. Good evening. My name is Ed Thorne, Town Administrator in Pembroke. This is Bob Parker, Conservation Agent. Rachel Keller, who's the Administrative Assistant to the uh, Conservation Commission. For the, uh, I'll take that one back. For the uh, what's it visual arts. Yeah, we don't have the graphic arts department in uh, Pembroke, so. I thought you did that. <laughs> so we're just kind of winging it here for you folks, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to point out the uh, uh, the project that uh, we're proposing to the, the commission and, um, and uh, looking forward to the discussion on that. Um, <clears throat> the uh, the cover memorandum includes, it says the project will include the following remediation of the riverfront zone, which includes crush zone, granite curbing, boulders, fencing, and, and picnic tables. And then the rest of the project uh, will entail landscaping improvements to the entire clear area of the park, uh, five new ADA compliant picnic tables, uh, three new in-ground benches to replace the current wooden benches, uh, signs identifying the Indian Head Trail in the Ludups Ford Park and, and parking lot improvements, pretty much not paving it, but just dressing up the parking lots themselves. So, so if we go to, <clears throat> um, under the remediation, uh, the crushed stone, as opposed to in photo number one. <clears throat> and, and this is being proposed, you know, by Bob um, for um, you know, for the riverfront area. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So the uh, the area to your right, which is closest to the dam, uh, we're proposing to have a uh, crush zone in that area. And Bob, you want to explain to why that area? Uh, well, the area is bleeding. The dam bleeds through that hill, and putting grass or any, anything else would be almost impossible to keep. Uh, maintained because it's it gets muddy when the water's high like this time of the year dries out later on but then it'll come back muddy again so uh, just figure that a crushed stone layer right there will to the edge of the water would trust that piece up. and what's there now just growth and bowl and rock and or rock and dirt and mud yeah. You know, the bank is, well, you, as you can see, dead center. You see some erosion 
where the water from the, you know, is seeping through and coming out. Yeah, if you go to photo number four, you can see, um, you know, that's the, uh, um, the sock that uh, the DPW put down, but then that area to towards the uh, stream is the area that we're talking about. Okay. And to separate that crushed stone uh, from the, the grassy area in the park, um, Bob is suggesting that we recycle some granite curbing that is coming off the Route 14 project in, in Pembroke uh, to act as a, uh, a buffer between the crushed stone area and the, uh, the lawn area. How deep would the crushed stone be? From you know, the ground up like six inches or? Uh, yeah, three or four inches. Uh, the granite uh, is talking about, we're talking about not laying it as it, it would be on a sidewalk, but laying it on the flat side, side mm -hmm. end to end just as a, as a, as a barrier. So about six inches of granite curb. So it would be you know, between the four or six inch mark. And then the crushed stone, does it run right to the edge of the, to the bank? Well, is there something that contains it to, from yeah. the water? It's something to keep it from. Well, we're, gonna, uh, we're hoping to use not so much. We're talking crusher. We're looking for an inch and a half granite chip, oh. bigger, almost small riprap type of stone, not uh, not real small yeah, stone. Okay. Yeah, that was going to be my question. What, what diameter of stone? I mean, an inch and a half probably wouldn't go anywhere. Inch and a half yeah. to two inch, yeah. Something yeah. That, something you could still walk on, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. be big enough so it can't go on. And especially chip this chip head around. Um, C in number one is um, a, an area that's going to be between the two concrete structures on the riverfront. Um, as you know, they're, they're, you can see the concrete structure in photo one, um, which is to the east of where the crushed stone area would be. And then um, we're proposing, uh, we have dozens of boulders that act as a um, kind of like a fence for the, the road that is in the area. And uh, we would propose to put those boulders uh, on the riverbank between that concrete structure and the one that is just at the end of with the uh, the bridges there's a concrete structure and as you'll be able to see I believe <coughs> in photo two and um, photo three there's a, a concrete structure that is right at the end of just probably feet to, uh, several feet away from where the uh, the uh, the bridges so we're you know that's a proposal that we have is to put those large boulders between those two concrete structures from a construction standpoint these boulders that we have lining all the roads in and out of here now we're hoping to put in wooden guardrail salvage from the route 14 project as part of it and so these boulders are on site they could easily be moved and set uh, to hold this wall. This is about a six or an eight foot, almost vertical earth area right there. And the, the fence and picnic tail in photo two there, so would that, the boulders act as a, uh, you know, a, an embankment to hold up that growth, or is that a flat no, area right a, there? that's flat, and that's, that's flat anyways. The old, Factory foundation is okay. in there already. These boulders actually would be running from one piece of cement uh, foundation from the old factory to another piece. Mm -hmm. But it's an area where now it's just. Uh, is this is this piece right here where you you, you know showing where you would want to yeah. put a fence? Is that this? No, that's way out here. This is just, this is just another piece of structure. Okay, it just I don't I don't see it in this picture. Yeah, that's know. why uh, that's why we had to do uh, another photo because the the air photo that we had that was um, you know was, if you go to Google Maps or, or uh, Bing Maps 
it's the bird's eye view um, mm -hmm. situation, and we've got that. I mean, I took we had dozens of maps of this thing, and I think this shows the area the best we could. But we just couldn't get the area where we want to put some that fencing in photo three, which is a concrete structure. <coughs> You know, basically, like I said, just feet away from the, where the bridge is and uh, uh, West Elm Street is. Okay, but where you've got the diagonal lines here, you're saying the boulders are. Yeah, right. That's that. that's before you get to where this. Sorry. And uh, this one, where you see where you've shown where you want to put the picnic table. Right. Right. The yeah. boulders are in here. No, before model back back in here. Okay. Although this is solid through here, it picks it up right about here and comes back. Okay, this is this is solid right here. What yeah, makes that there. solid right there? Is uh, there's riprap in there now? There from, is. Okay. Uh, when the uh, drainage project was done. Yeah, I'm familiar with the area. I just haven't gone and looked at it to remind me of every little thing. But okay. Uh, photo number four kind of shows you the area where, um, as I mentioned earlier, where the, the approximate area where that curve would go between the uh, crushed stone area and, and uh, uh, the lawn. So that's a different view. This is from um, the West Elm Street area towards the dam on the Pembroke side. In this figure, you can see another concrete structure left from the old right. factory. Is that what that, I was just going to ask what that was. As yeah. part of, this whole area has got these under the underground here. These are just the ones. That, and we're hoping to take the granite <coughs> from this concrete structure and bring it around to the edge of the dam so that we kind of tie the two of them yeah, that together with the structure in, in photo four is this structure right here. Okay. This structure is that structure right here. There wasn't an area high enough to make a picture of this thing, so we had to use. Uh, you know. Hamburg doesn't have a drone yet? <laughs> well, I don't know. This guy over here has got one. So. Okay. All right. Are any trees or anything going to be planted in there? No plantings? Uh, my mind's on I haven't got to the actual finished planting. We'll probably be back. Other than no. So grass. this is a proposal? Because yeah. this is all within 100 feet? Yep, correct. So it's all right. This park, as we've been trying to reclaim it, has been basically maybe done backwards because we started up on the high, the high side, the easy and work towards the water where, and all things, it would have been easier to start at the water, but that, that isn't the way it was done. So now, now we're getting down to the water's edge. And we like to see, you know, people having access and to be able to look through <coughs> the river, so I think that's... You know, what you're proposing is a you know, gives better access and uh, for the public to enjoy the river in that area. Yeah, and, and the last photo, number five, just shows you a large scale area of, of, the, of the park itself and all the cleared area and, and the fact that one of the proposals we're going to have um, is part of a um, Community Preservation Act a recommendation at uh, our last town meeting uh, was to allocate $10,000 for these improvements to the park as well and uh, one of them would be you know a, um, a sign designating the Pembroke side of the Indian Head Trail you know I know that on the Hanover side there's several along Water Street um, and that trail goes that and um, as Bob and Rachel will allude to the uh, they have entered into a contract with uh, Wildlands Trust to uh, to uh, ask for a forty-three thousand dollar grant, which would uh, improve the trail on the Pembroke side all the way up to Cross Street, 
as it's it's your state well it's cross yeah, and it's state street yeah. right mm -hmm. in hanover and mm -hmm. hansen and then come back on the north side on the uh, hanover side all the way back to the Ford Park on that side. So it'll be a, a big loop and uh, the $43,000 will be an out, out grant and um, and there was about $15,000 approximately that was in kind matched by Prebble Conservation, uh, Hanson Conservation and Hanover Conservation. Hmm. That makes it easier, a little bit easier. Yeah. And Hanover, I think their in kind match is heavy equipment. Uh, to clear the uh, the trail. Uh, what kind of equipment would you be using to put the boulders? I assume you're going to need some sort of crane or a uh, front of oh, the type. With them, set at the no, to set them with, and they can be moved down with a fire loader or all terrain forklift. The boulders are only uh, three to four foot. Oh, okay, so not they're yeah, not big. Nothing will be out there. The three to four foot is they're easy to set and stack coming up and hope to hold the back. How about the in ground benches? Can you describe what those would look like? Um, we're still looking at uh, different, um, you know, there would be uh, benches that would, they would be in the ground, whether it would be a concrete base or we would, I guess right now the tables are, are uh, chained. Yeah, we, we've anchored them. Um, the ones we've had used, yeah. So, so, it's, so somebody couldn't take the net? That right, exactly. Right. Okay. Right. I didn't know if it was kind of built in, like you're kind of figuring out how to build it into the landscape or something. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. We got, um, we use them at, at some of our beaches where we have our swim programs that they're put in the ground uh, through concrete. Yeah. Then that would be the, that would be the reasoning behind, for lack of a better term, I think I did see in one of the catalogs, they call it in-ground benches. Mm -hmm. And my other question, what, um, how much cutting or would be done or has been done thus far? Or would you have to remove any? Part of, part of what we've been working over the years, a little bit of time at the park, is we have a lot of knotwood on that side of the river. And we're not adapt to using chemicals at all there. So we've found that if we mow it, and put a little loam over the roots, enough so we can run the power motors. And the DPW comes in once every <coughs> week or uh, 10 days and mows it. After about three years, the knotweed stays down. goes away. But it takes about a three year period. But uh, if we can't mow it with power mowers, it doesn't get done every 10 days if somebody has to get off with a weed whacker and try to knock it back. So. By making the lawn so that they can run it, run the power mowers over it. Eventually, we have been beating our not, not weed problem, and that's what we have done this spring. We were adding to the area that we were trying to defeat the not weed at. We cut it down, spread a thin layer of loam, and seeded it, and now they can mow that with power mowers instead of just uh, trying to do it once or twice a year with the, with the weed whack. Well, that, there, I, is I, 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 yeah. there is some trees near the edge of the water that are vine to it with, uh, yeah, well, I, I mentioned. There, there's a lot of vine in the tree choking the trees off. There's two or three left right at the corner of the bridge that really need the vine pot taken out of the trees so the trees can continue to grow correctly. So the roots have been cut on those? Not yet. We didn't quite get that. Okay. Point. That's, 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 that's on what needs to be. Yeah, on they're the, killing the trees, so the trees aren't going to live with those vines on Right. This is right. And, and you can see one of the areas would be in photo number three to the, um, there's a large tree you can see from the proposed uh, area where the fence is to the power lines that run parallel to West Elm Street. So where that large tree is on the right-hand corner of that photo is the area yeah, I believe where we're going to get done yet. rid of some of the, the vines. 
Yeah. Now, the only thing I'm a little concerned about is because this says project will include, and we have sort of have this remediation stuff, and then landscaping improvements in the entire cleared area of the park. But there's nothing, there's nothing really spelled out about landscaping in here, and it it seems I mean, not not. Uh, you know, listed anyway, and you discuss some of it. But it seems like we're, you know, I, I'm looking at photo four, where you've got scruffy little edge of the water type plants. And uh, my concern is that it seems like all that's going to come out because it's going to be gravel or boulders. And um, that doesn't seem like. A landscaping improvement, and I'm not sure what it. I, I'm not sure where what you're if you're calling for that. That would be just the. Uh, that's part of the um, application that we have with the CPC. So we're talking about anything that's a hundred feet back from 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 the uh, from the stream from the river. You know, more more towards the uh, trail area. If you go to the photo right. number five, you can see that. That the area is a lot more extensive than just what we've been talking to you folks about. I mean, we're talking all the way, you know, hundreds of feet away from that large tree, which is by the dam um, westward to where that trail sign is going to be. So that's basically what we were talking about. Mm. You know, just dressing up the. Uh, okay. Well, it just it just brings down. my concern is that you know the the area that we would normally say you know very limited. Cutting, it almost sounds like, you know, within a hundred feet of the river, it. Uh, it's, I, I gotta go back and look at the place, but it, it a, seems it, like it, we're cutting, not just. It's almost like you're gonna have to cut and then grade right down to the river and then fill it in with that's rocks. That's that's a before picture in April, yeah. first of April, and then that's what was already cut during, um, during the process. Yeah. I think I, I think it would be you know beneficial too. I mean, for the park as well, um, <clears throat> to have some sort of growth down near the river. Because I mean, one of these photos here, this aerial one, it does look so barren down here and dead. <clears throat> you know, from this aerial photo, you know, if there was some sort of you know revegetation type thing that you know after you put your the stone down or whatever in certain areas where you can actually make, you know, because it looks awful barren right along the... Yeah, I think this is, this is some of the area we grassed this year. That's cool. Okay. Yeah, that, that, the, yeah. that was yeah. spread over and planted in this grove. That if we take... Uh, uh, one here. This is some of the bare area right there. Right. This in here is all yeah. been grassed. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody had been behind the waddle. This in here hasn't been done. This is where we wanted. That's right. We're talking about bringing the granite around. The granite around. So we can grass here and then use the stone. And there is vegetation in the front of this. And in the water, we have water vegetation. That's that's. Actually, you can almost see the difference right on the edge right. here from well, we there to there. That's, that's basically near the, the water line of the river. I think aesthetically it would look, it would look nice with vegetation. I mean, the, the stone will serve its purpose. Um, you know, some sort of vegetation down along the bank. Maybe vegetation probably wouldn't be a bad idea to make it blend in a little better and make it hold a little better. You know, something that's controllable. There are a lot of pussy willows in there. Aren't there big, high pussy willow bushes growing in the... In the, in the water. In the water. Yeah. In the actual, in the water. In the water, part, yeah. but that, that are, got good roots You know, but something it. that's controllable that, you know, can be maintained, you know, it won't get overgrown, it won't cause, you know, yeah, the, the water area you know, changes as the river flows. Right, with the when height the of the water. river comes down, then all of a sudden there's a lot more land. But uh, right now is the high, and that's the line we've been using is the, 
is what we call the high water, what I call the high water of the river. I won't say it doesn't get, it may get even higher on a real, a few days when we're really pumping some water, water for it. But. So what if, what if we had a, um, more description in terms of the vegetation plan, and to Dan's point, more of a restriction in terms of within 100 feet. I don't know if that would work with you, Dan. Yeah, I, you know, I'm. I was just thinking that if some, if some homeowner along the river had gone down and cut all the trees right down to the high water mark, we'd be going crazy on them. I mean, it would. It just you're not supposed to do that. There's a limited amount of cutting that should be done within 100. And I understand, I'm looking at this picture and say, oh, you know, nice grass up there. And I understand that, you know, that from your management part of it, it'd be great to be able to have mobile grass on a relatively flat area. But I'm, I, I think we're going a step backwards if we take out all the vegetation and cover stuff with rocks and gravel. It's... Um, I agree with you. Uh, I live in Canada. I used to live in Cumberland, but I sit at the end of the other side of the river a lot. In fact, I used to live in Felicia. And when I went down about a month or so ago and saw all those trees and everything going, I was really upset. And that was a nice view there. Now you get nothing. The grass doesn't make it. You need vegetation, you need trees. And there's two sh trees that are cut that far from the ground. No, I, we've got pictures here. It, it is a little um, beyond what I would have expected to see, you know, to come in and say, now we want to talk about what's to do. I mean, I'd like to get, like, Steve Ivis, uh, some guy who's a plant person, to come in and say, well, here's what we could put in there to do some, some of the things that you're trying to accomplish. I mean, I'm, I'm not the expert on, on what it what the best approach might be that looks a little more natural, but um, you know it's it's not a you know a factory site now, and we're trying to adapt it. But I'm I'm not um, I'm not sure that taking out all the vegetation and then putting down gravel and boulders instead is um, in line with a protective order. I'd, I'd like to see some, um, you know, a planting plan on, on one of these, as opposed to. Um, I mean, it just it just feels like from what you're presenting, it, it, we're losing the vegetation and it's stones, of one size or another, and that doesn't seem appropriate from a North River Commission point of view. Um, there is, I mean, I just know Steve Ivis is a guy from Norwell who's done a lot of this kind of as a consultant, but I, I, I think we need a plan to plant something there. That I was that just, that's what I was sort of saying, that, you know, some sort of planting down by the river, you know, in between or around what you're proposing, just so it doesn't look, well, I guess, like Dan says, like straight stone, um, and I, I don't know what would grow the best down there. I mean, I think grass is great for the park area, but some sort of something to, you know, hold the bank in as well. Um, is there a lot of foot traffic in that area where you put in the gravel? Or do people go to the water's edge there? Yeah, if they, they fish, they, they'll be there in that area, mm -hmm. certainly up by the dam. You know, I think ideally we would like Pembroke side to look like Hanover side, but you know, you know, I but Hanover's been working on that side for a long time, and 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 if you look at an old map of the rubber mill, most of the structures were on the Pembroke side, you know, as opposed to the Hanover side. I, I think I actually have the map here that will show that just from you folks information. But, were a heck of a lot more structures on the Pembroke side than there were on the, the Hanover side. So I think it was easier for the town of Hanover to do what they did over there. Well, it looks like they had a, there was some kind of cement retaining wall on the Hanover side that was put in well before the order. We're not in a position to say 
go ahead and put in a cement retaining wall on the bank of the river because it's that's within that that hundred feet thing. I mean, we're uh, um, you know I just frankly, if somebody if a homeowner had done this, we'd have them in here with a cease and desist because they cut right down to the river. You're not supposed to, very limited cutting within a hundred feet. Um, and we'd ask for a revegetation plan. And I, I appreciate the fact that you're coming in now after doing the cutting and saying, well, here's kind of what we want to do. But I think while it's in the kind of stage, um, there should be work, some work done to make it that it's not just crushed stone and boulders. There should be some vegetation in there that, that's appropriate. Well, else have any? I mean, even on even on a public road, Route 14, <coughs> if there's a tree taken down, there's one or two that's replaced. Where, you know where it is. Um, I can't see any need of taking down what they did take down. Um, and it kind of bothers me in a way that somebody from conservation would authorize something like that um, without a plan, a proper plan in place. And I appreciate them coming in now in front of the commission to talk about this and correct whatever the problem was but maybe you can relate a little bit to the board bob about why you authorize something like this now um, and and let them let the board know um, what's going on here why why would you do something like that because you're very very particular about anything else in conservation in Pembroke that anywhere near the water um, and this is a historic site down there, and to do something down there on a historic site on the North River Commission um, just doesn't make sense to me that you would authorize that, number one, being an agent and on conservation for so long. And it's, I mean, you're an old guy, Bob. You've been around a long time, and it's very hard for me to believe that, that you didn't know that you're not supposed to cut that close to the water. It's, uh, but I think now that it's done, we really can't cry over spilled milk, but we have to replace what's been done down there and make it back something similar to what it was before that was done. And, and I agree. I would like to have a look like him on the side too. And I think DPW is, is, uh, yeah, this is this a great group of guys yeah, that you call them up to get something done, and it gets right done. Unfortunately, way. it was done too much this time. This, this um, is all this. Because I work with them all the time, and that's all you got to do is make yep. a telephone call. And the guys are great. Um, and I'm sure that they didn't know what was going on down there, that there was a restriction. Um, but I just think that it would be um, <coughs> in order for you to talk to the board and just explain to them on why you allowed something like this to happen. Um, number one, and number two is that, that I, the other thing that really bothers me is that, that um, by putting the loom down there during migration within 100 feet of, of the uh, natural bank, only allowed some of that stuff because we've had so much rain this year. If it was any other year, if it was last year, it would be a drought and we wouldn't have the problem. But this year, by putting the loom down there, that stuff ran right in the water during migration of the fish. And the fish is, and the fish is very important down there. And you can keep shaking your head, but the Division of Marine Fisheries was down there. They looked at it. They're going to send a letter to the town of Pembroke saying that it was in violation of, of um, the Wetland Protection Act because it never should have been done, and it never should have been done during migration period. So those things all have to get taken into consideration um, when you do something like that, and I'm sure you know that. Um, but it's just, it just, if anything, this is a learning lesson that this just doesn't happen again in the future, and let's just try to correct whatever the problem is down there and make it look back to something similar to what it was. And that would be my <coughs> There has been no facilitation of the loam that was spread into the river. We check it on a daily basis. It has not happened. Well, I've been down there and saw it. Um, I don't know if um, 
Rick Madden here, was, he's on conservation. He was with me when we watched the loom going right down into the river. The Division of Marine Fisheries explained that, that that, that loom was coming down into the river. Um, and that shouldn't be done. It, it, never mind, uh, e even under the regular laws that you in the Chapter 40 that you work in all the time, um, anything that goes near the water, you gotta be careful, especially during migration periods. And it's, it's, um, it's something that should be watched. And if, and if anything, it should, like I said, should be a learning lesson that this doesn't happen again in the future. Because we're trying to get the fish to come back, and we sure don't want anything that's going to um, hurt the fish. So, so it sounds like uh, the, the plan that we worked on, you know, we, we've spent, I don't know, 35, 40 minutes talking about this. I would recommend going back and reworking the plan, coming back in the future. I mean, you know, I I think what they're proposing to do, I think, is, like I said, it, it gives access to the river, it gives public access. I think it's a good idea. I mean, you, Bridge Street and Marshfield, you know, we approved similar, you know, stone and granite um, down there at that little park that they did as well. Yeah. Um, so I don't have a real problem with that aspect of it in any way. I just... My only concern would be the, the vegetation part of it. Um, if you could somehow get some sort of plan over to us. They have someone on the commission, Rick Madden, who has the expertise of plantings and, you know, yeah, Like I said, I just think it, it would make it look, look a lot nicer as well with some sort of, you know, I just, you know the granite curving and the boulders, but on other sides and on the other side of that, uh, Grant a petition there, you know, some sort of, some sort of growth or, uh, you know, vegetation, revegetation of that. You know, like I, you know, mm -hmm. here behind here a little bit and here, you know, it's just it's informal discussion anyway. Just something to make sure it's not just a barren mm -hmm. yeah. rock, uh, rock well, area. This vegetation Could still all exists in here. Right, I mean, like that. You know, that's pretty much what I'm. You hear it come over here. You're into cement, right? right. At the water, and then as we come down, we have the steep, the steep bank. Where right, and I, you know, the, the land, the grass up above. I, you know, I think that's a good idea. That gives it access and makes it more of a park feel. Um, you know, that's my only thought on it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I think if you just look around the river, it is an industrial site. It's obvious what's there and what's come back. Um, I don't like the sterileness of it. I don't like the sterileness of the Hanover side. It's lawn right up to the water. I'm a believer in a you know, buffer zone of plants. Also, they bring in butterflies, insects, and make it alive. I think there's a great opportunity here that we shouldn't miss. What's been done was obviously I, number one, as a conservation commission member, I apologize. All right, that's all I can do. Brought it to your attention. As a commissioner, fish commissioner, it's uh, not right. Shouldn't have been done, and there was saltation. And worse than that, we tried to discuss it beforehand and take mediation and got stonewalled. So um, I think we have an overly clean palate. I think certain things apply that you take the tree down and you plant too. That's regardless of where you do it, especially in this place. I think we have a good opportunity here to show what we can do to make up for something that may have been a big mistake. We can reclamate it. We can put in a lot of things that should be there. And there's a merit, starting with North Atlantic cedars. They love that type of terrain. They lock their roots in. They buttress. They don't blow over. They're long term. They give shade, and in 300 years, you might have an osprey nesting in one. <laughs> but I think it's important to look at what's going to happen really close, considering what's happened. No, I agree. I mean, down, like you're saying, down in here, I mean, to, to do some sort of plantings next to the river. I think it needs multiple plantings, well, multiple I, layers, multiple canopies, and has to be restored properly, and should be. And it's uh, a well worth area. It would be a beautiful site. No, I think, I think it has a potentially a very beautiful area and utilized by the town of Pembroke. Much better topography than Hanover does, not to be 
pitch <coughs> to anybody, but we have beautiful topography here, and you know, it's just uh, you cut a tree down, you put it back to and um, reforestation, guys. So that's just how I breathe. Is that something that you guys could work into a plan? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I, I just wanted to give the commissioner a quick little history lesson. In 2001, the uh, Pembroke Conservation Commission granted authority by an NOI to both the Hanover and, and uh, Pembroke uh, DPWs to construct a stormwater project at the bridge. And so I, I'm thinking that maybe the DPW thought that they had, you know, a blank check to, to do work, you know, on that because of what was allowed by the Conservation Commission in 2001. Okay. Um. But uh, the suggestion by the commission is is well noted, and I would be happy to come back with one. Yeah, I mean, I think if you know, like I said, I I think the commission, you know, wants to see access utilized. I mean, Pembroke to have a park like that right there would be good for Pembroke. I think it would be good for the river, good for everyone, um, as long as it's done correctly. And as far as you know. The stone, like Dan is, you know, concerned about that much rock and stone. Um, I think with enough plantings around it and near it and done correctly, it'll tone down that rock. If you put the right plantings, yeah. So many years you want to see. See, well, that's what that's so, I'm sort of saying. Rock, yeah. And live invasive species getting in there. And right. And you have to put some native native species in there that'll flourish and exactly. do well in there. Um, I think it could be a great yeah. Thing. I mean, there should be a vegetative buffer that's not just invasive species, and I, I, this is the time to do it right, to avoid. I mean, yeah, I, I think you're right. It, it probably is a time to get it done um, and do it. So, I mean, if any other questions or thoughts, anyone? I mean, I think it's a great opportunity. It's an informal discussion. So it's a great opportunity to hear both sides and come up with you know just improved plan overall, which is going to benefit everybody. Right. Also, real quick, I think um, what needs to be done, in my opinion, I go by there, I live there, I fish there, I've grown up there. Um, right now, the parking lot at the base where you come in, going into Pembroke, is still a bit running into the river, and they did change that grade after we had this problem. But I think immediately I would put more fill along the rocks and push all the water out to the street, whatever it takes. Um, that's the real choke point where it's going to come in. Just a berm, more of a berm. They did a good job already, but stop the weird on that spot. If you look at the bridge, there's a direct discharge off the street yep. into that stream right, right. now. Exactly. And there's no place to put it anywhere else. That That's there. It's the way they've... They left it after the last thing, but there's a direct discharge on the side of the bridge down through the riprap into the, and all that water from yep. there. And, you know, and, it, and it's all, it, whatever they change is coming downhill to that spot. That's the low spot. So, so if you are going to have equipment in there, that could maybe alter the grade of a well, little I mean, bit. something, yeah. Right. There is a direct discharge that, yeah, it, right at the edge of the road there. Across that, the street, right? It was left that way by the people who, did the job in 01 or 02 or to, but to it clean had, it up. It did have a lot of species there that yeah. was holding the bank and stuff, which has been removed. And it's a, it's a give and take process. But I think if you can keep, you know, mostly floodwaters going away from it, you're better off mm -hmm. until it's reclamated, I think. Well, the other thing is that there's, a, um, there's an Eagle Scout project. I see that's on the list here, too, about um, the Eagle's um, Scout project was they built a bridge in there, um, which is probably about 50 feet away from the river. So is that something that the Eagle Scout should come before the board and talk to? Well, just a bridge over. It's a just a bridge over. Um, replace the, the, the bridge. Replace the over the stream. Over a yeah. stream type thing? Further up, just on the, you know, you go up there. Yeah, you're going to the trail. It's yeah, probably going to yeah, be yeah, I know, trail. I know what you're talking about. I mean, if it's, if it's within 100 feet or a couple hundred feet, he may want to come in just to see how the process goes. It probably would be an idea for him to, you know, again, if we had any, not that we'd have any concerns with the rebuild of a small little bridge like that, but I mean, uh, well, it may we be. Had a, we had an article passed at the last town meeting a couple of weeks ago 
and consolidated all of the inspection departments under under myself. So yeah. that would be conservation, the CBA, um, the building department, and uh, the, other, the fourth one. There are four of them. And, uh, and on this particular project, um, on Ludham Ford, I uh, definitely took personal, um, you know, uh, control of this so that everything is going to go through my office right. on this so that I'll be the point person from now on, you know, for this project. And, and our contact with you folks. Oh, great. Yeah, I mean, I mean I just I think for as far as the Eagle Scout, I mean, he may want to, it may be beneficial for him to sure. know the whole process that goes along with the. Uh, that along to him, that's part of the process. Right. You know, you, you know, informal. I mean, you could probably come in when you guys come in with yours or whatever is, sure. okay. whatever's easiest, so whatever fits. Any other questions? I'm standing up for the Eagle Scout project, but it. it it went the process, but just didn't realize that y'all part right, of the process. Right, yeah, that, and that's it. Because we yeah. went through, they went through uh, Wildlands Trust, because right. the properties abutted and all that. It. He did everything that anyone thought had to be done. I'm sure. And, I mean, that, and, that's, at the time. I mean, you know, the, and I surely wouldn't have thought about coming here. I, I many people don't. You know, <laughs> you know, many people it don't, was, and that's why it's, I mean, you know. That, that part, it, uh, and again, basically, I didn't even realize you had that much that control of this park mm -hmm. until all of this came up. And we've well, just been working here year in and year yeah, out, yeah. and nobody has, has said anything. Yeah, and, right, uh, as long as you know, we, it's done. You know, we're sorry that we didn't come before, but you know, because we didn't last year and the year and the year before, yeah. and nobody had said, said anything, anything, we just right? assumed yeah. that we were uh, in understandable. good grounds. Understandable. Yeah, we, uh, you know, Koppelman and Page, you know, has brought back a, an attorney that uh, that we work with now. I think you know her from Marshfield, Amy Quistle. Okay. She was on the Conservation yep. Commission in Marshfield for about 13 years or so. So she's our contact at KP Law, you know, for all yep. all things conservation. Good. So. Okay. Well, it sounds, does anyone have any other questions? Or? Um, parking lot improvements, would those show up on your the proposal when you come in. To do that. Okay, so I, I just. I mean, if you take a ride out there, you can see that there would be. There's a need, as Bob mentioned, to replace the boulders with, you know, some guardrail, some wooden guardrail, just to dress yeah. it up. Um, right. Well, you mentioned that it wasn't going to be paved, but I'm hoping that it's not going to be paved. Right. Exactly. You're right. Okay. So that would be good to show on the plan and, and all. I think we need a real plan. Yeah. Um, Actual measurements and you know grades, and you have like a regular plan. That's and that's I think that's what we're asking. Yeah, for, you know. I think I think it's it's a great project, and I you know look forward to uh, if you guys have any other questions or thoughts or anything that we can uh, help you with. Please feel free to contact Judy or. Well, the boys that we have had money appropriated for replacing picnic benches and and so forth. Now, right. is that all all that on hold? In other words, well, the money's not available until July 1 anyway. Until so. July 1, right, but we still got to get a plan. We wouldn't get it through in that period of time. I mean, so we need to know whether, yes, we can replace picnic benches, or no, no we can't replace picnic benches because we, we don't want to disturb anything more than what we already I, have. I don't, I, I mean, personally, myself, I don't have a problem with you making it accessible and putting picnic benches out there and, um, you know. Yeah, we have a couple of picnic benches that were, as you know, <laughs> right. one of the photos near the riverfront, so that we certainly wouldn't touch yeah, that. Yeah, no, and I, no, I don't want to hold up, hold up the project. Yeah, anything that's two hundred um, feet back from... The stuff that's the all back up the hill, the lawn type area, right. that's not the issue. The issue right, is yeah. the bank of the river has yeah. been, you know, attacked much more than we would ever have allowed. And now we want to see how we're going to replant, revegetation plan. And it and apparently it's part of your structural plan too, so that's why it's got to be a pretty precise proposal. But no, I, I would say, you know, get picnic benches out there and have people have access to it for the summer months now that we're closely approaching, so. 
and then just get back to us when you can when you get the, all the rest of it. Awesome. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you very much for coming in. Thank, Thank you, you very much. For the invitation.